In this video, we'll take a closer look at the asset management capabilities of Bibble5. To use these features, you will need to import images into a Bibble5 catalog, which we showed briefly in the Getting Started video, and which we'll show in more detail in later tutorials. For now, we'll be learning what asset management is and how to get the most out of it in Bibble5. Here we have Bibble5 with two catalogs open. I'll show you the step-by-step -step process of how I created these in our next tutorial. For now, let's take a look at the first catalog. First, I'm going to toggle off the preview panel and the adjustment tools to show more thumbnails. Now just click on a folder to see all the images in that folder, just like we did when we were in the file system tab. But here, you can hold down the control key, that's the command key for Mac users, and select multiple folders to quickly see the contents of more than one folder at a time. That could be useful if your shoot spans more than one day or more than one folder, but as you can see, that can put a lot of images on the screen at once. Now, let's take a look at the Browse panel. If I open up the Rating section, I can see that I've got 11,000 images with no rating and a little over 1,000 images that have 1, 2, or 3 stars. Clicking on the 1 star entry shows all my 1 star images in any of my catalogs. Control click the 2 star entry to add those also but I want to know how many 1, 2, and 3 star images I have in just a couple of specific folders. No problem. Let's just select the folders we're interested in, like these here, and now click Link to Catalogs. Instantly, there it is. 34 1 star images and only a couple of 2 and 3 star shots. The Link to Catalog option tells the browse view to only show entries and counts for images found in the folders selected above. So, if I open the shooting info, I can see that I have images from Canon, Fuji, Nikon, and Pentax cameras in my catalog. Turning Link to Catalog back on, I can quickly see that on this shoot I only shot with my Nikon camera. Now, I remember a specific shot I took on that trip. I like the shot, so I probably gave it a rating, but I'm not sure how many stars I gave it. So, let's click the 1, 2, and 3 star headings, and then click Refine. Refine tells the metadata browser to only show entries and counts for images that match the Refine selection, in this case one, two, or three star images. So it's kind of like the link to catalog feature, but Refine works with metadata entries instead of catalog folders. I remember shooting this specific image in the afternoon, so now I can open up the date and time categories to see when I shot all my one, two, and three star images that were found in these folders above open up each one of these and I can see a few afternoon hours in there. Clicking through them I can quickly bring up the exact shot I was looking for. That's what asset management is all about, helping you find specific images out of your whole body of photographic work. So that's a quick look at browsing with folders and metadata, using the link to catalog feature to limit the metadata browser to specific folders in any of your catalog, and using the refine button to limit the metadata browser to images with specific metadata. Now let's look at the metadata itself. Most of the metadata shown here was found automatically by Bibble when it imported these images. Most standard EXIF and IPTC metadata is included here. But the real power comes from adding your own metadata, mainly keywords, ratings, labels, and tags. So let's take a look at that. We'll start with the travel catalog this time. We'll unlink the catalog, remove the refinement, and switch back to thumbnail mode. Then roll up the folders of the first catalog and open up the travel catalog. This catalog contains images imported by referenced locations, meaning the folders in Bibble are identical to the folders you would see in a file browser like Windows Explorer or Max Finder, as you can see here. That makes finding your images in Windows Explorer or the Finder quick and straightforward, but it also means that unless your folders are perfectly organized, which as you can see mine are not, Finding specific images based on content, who or where you were shooting, who your client was, and so on, isn't quite as simple. That's where metadata can really help. Now let's select the whole catalog and make sure this Recurse Folders button is on to tell Bibble to show me images out of any of the subfolders of the folder that I've selected. Now, link to catalogs to show metadata only from this catalog. And now I'll open up the keywords, ratings, and tags. You can see I've rated some of these images already, but the only keywords in here are those that I added when I imported these. So let's add some more. 
I'm going to open up the editing tools again so I can use the keyword field, and then I'll select this folder. Notice that the metadata browser updates with counts only from this folder and its subfolders. Now in this trip, I spent time in Taiwan, Thailand, and Singapore, in that order. So I'll select these three folders from my time in Taiwan, press Ctrl A to select all the thumbnails shown, and then I'm going to edit the keyword travel to be travel, semicolon Asia, semicolon Taiwan, and press Enter. That applies these keywords to all the images I have selected. Now you can see in the metadata browser that the travel keyword gained this plus sign, meaning I can open it up now to see Asia, and then again to see Taiwan. This hierarchy of keywords gives you a huge amount of freedom in how you can use keywords to organize or group your images. Let's continue and select the next set of folders, which I know contains images from Thailand. You can quickly confirm that by just scrolling through the thumbnails. Control A again to select all of them, and edit Travel, this time to read Travel, semicolon, Asia, semicolon, Thailand. And then let's do the same process with the last folder from Singapore. So with that done, we can quickly see all the images shot in Thailand by just clicking Thailand, instead of remembering which folders they were in, and which folders were from Singapore or from Taiwan. I've been using keywords based on where they were taken. As these are all travel shots, that makes sense for them, but keywords can be used for much more than that. Let's look at an example. I've gone ahead and keyworded the rest of my travel catalog with keywords for the locations of where they were taken. Here in the Thailand group, let's look at some shots that were taken at Wat Aran. Click Refine to see the metadata in the browser from only these images. You can see I was shooting RAW plus JPEG, but I'm only interested in the RAW files here. So open up the shooting info, file type, and select raw. Then click refine again to see only those. Let's take this one here. Switch back to standard view to see both the thumbs and the preview image. Now right click the thumb to make a new version from this one. And it starts out with the same keywords as the version it was created from. But when I click the black and white preset, to make this a monochrome version of the original, that preset also adds the keyword treatment semicolon black and white. This shows how you can create a group of keywords for image content, or origin like my travel group, and then another group for processes or treatments applied to those shots. So with a single click, you could find all the images you've made black and white, or any of the other treatments you use regularly. So that's a quick overview of asset management in Bibble 5. We've seen how to use the metadata browser, including the refine and link to catalog tools to quickly find your images based on ratings, keywords, shooting information, date or time, regardless of how the images are stored on your computer.